All right, guys, today I want to talk about CES, Consumer Electronics Show 2023. Uh, a lot of people have seen these things in person. I was not one of them, unfortunately. I live in Sydney, Australia, hoping to go there next year. But today I want to talk about two of my, well, top two favorite inventions, ideas, technologies that were actually at this place. Now, how could you actually pick two out of the thousands that were there? Well, I know it's a very hard situation. But I've done it for you because today I want to talk about these two techs right now. Micro LED technology from Samsung. This thing gets me very excited for the future as well as Nakamichi Dragon 11.4.6 home surround sound system. These two techs are honestly something that make me very excited for the future of, of entertainment in our houses, right? This is some interesting stuff. Guys, if that sounds interesting to you, give us a like and subscribe. We're usually making, well, a lot of videos during the week, every week. And I haven't been doing that lately because I took a bit of a break because of Christmas and the New Year situation. I just kind of kept going from there. i uh, hoping to continue the whole situation of pushing videos out. So if that sounds exciting, corny I know, but anyway, a few little things that I wanted to also say that kind of, excite me uh is the afila very strange name but it's a new car coming from sony very interesting little concept there another thing that got me interested in the in the whole tech world uh, this year was a world first wireless oled tv from lg i believe it was uh this is basically the box on the left this box pumps 120 hertz which is 120 frames per second on uh, I'm pretty sure it does it do 120 hertz. Uh, it pumps that 4K from this box wirelessly to the TV. Now, obviously, the TV is still powered with a power cable, but at the actual, you know, DVD player, Netflix, whatever you want to go, Apple TV, it's going into there and it's going straight to your TV from a distance, right? That's another cool technology. Plus this, when I saw this, I was kind of weeded out at first, but then I was like, wow, that's actually very interesting, right? For people that don't like going to the doctor, uh, imagine you've got an itch down there <laughs> or whatever else, right? You, you, you pee into the toilet and this little device basically tells you, uh, does a little test on each time you go to the toilet, right? It's got a basically a circular thing that spins around with little test modules. It basically tests your wee, right? It tests your piss, right? To see if you're pissed off, to see how healthy you are. Then it sends that information to your phone. So they, they were three little, little uh, honorable mentions that I really liked from this year's CES. Uh, there was another company that has had a similar technology, by the way, but the technology kind of was like a huge bag that extended outside of the toilet. And it was just, I don't know, an inferior technology to this. So that's very interesting that two different companies are producing the same thing. One is much more better than the, and the other, and this one is clearly the better one, right? But going to my number one out of number two, you know, on this list, right? Nakamichi. Now, honestly, I did not know much about Nakamichi uh, beforehand, but uh, but I have done some research uh, on them recently, and wow, I'm actually surprised at the ratings. This is just some of them right here. The user experience has been great with a lot of their products, uh, a lot of the sound products in the past now they have a brand called the dragon now the dragon brand is, is a basically the premium premium brand and they hardly ever they hardly ever use the word dragon for their products right i think the last one could have been in the 90s uh they're using it again now for this device that's in the front of our screens right now the dragon soundbar look at this 75 years of, ex of, of audio excellence i actually had no idea about about them unfortunately I, i'm sad to say i'm honestly sad to say i've never personally used their products before but i would definitely like to have a look at this in person this thing gets me excited for the future of home entertainment this thing is literally on paper better than lg's sound bars samsung's sound bars even the Sonus Arc and Sony's soundbars, I'm, I'm just thinking if there's any more. JBL, they all pale in comparison, on paper at least, compared to this thing. Now, I have seen a couple of videos on YouTube about this. Uh, so I'm sure if you want more information about it, you will find it online. 
but this is what this thing looks like. It does have a sound bar situation. You shouldn't really call it a sound bar, right? But it has a sound bar, two subwoofers, and two rear speakers. So those are the subwoofers, one either side of the TV, for example, two rear speakers. And this is what it basically looks like inside of this soundbar. I mean, you shouldn't really call it a soundbar. It's basically the technology that's inside of it. it. There is no competition, right? There is no competition for this particular product. Let's just count them right now. So obviously the ones that are facing the ceiling right they are reflect they are pushing the sound to the ceiling so basically reflects the sound back at you so basically it sounds like there are speakers on the ceiling uh take a look here you're getting speakers on the side that basically pump the sound on the side uh, that they of course are supposed to once again reflect the sound off the side of your house uh, and reflect into your ears so it sounds like you've got sound speakers uh, you know sound yeah speakers from from the side of your rooms right how many rooms you got? Rooms, room, room, rooms. Let's count them right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, I don't quite know the technology behind these things, but they are very interesting. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 individual speakers in the front of this device. This thing is very interesting and I'm very excited to get my hands on one of these at some point. If only I had the money. Nakamichi, if you send me one, I will absolutely do a review on, on it for you and I'll probably keep it, never give it to you back either. Ha ha ha, you think I'm joking. Uh, so yeah, a very interesting product. You wanna know what the price is for this thing? Cause boy oh boy, I sure wanna know the price too. The dragon is scheduled to enter the world I was going to do a Game of Thrones reference then, but anyway, I fucked that up, didn't I? Uh, in spring 2023, and is priced at 3,500 American dollars USD. Or if you live in Sydney, Australia, or just Australia like me, that's roughly 5,000 bucks. So obviously this technology is not going to be for a lot of people, unfortunately, because the sound quality in this thing on paper is quite incredible. And I have seen some videos, some review videos on this thing. So I'm quite excited about this technology. That's gonna be number one of number two when it comes to technology. Now going to my second most exciting technology from CES 2023 is gonna be a TV called Micro LED. <coughs> oh, it's so exciting that I'm coughing over it apparently. But to understand where we're going in the future, Let's have a quick little look at our past, right? Whatever happened to Plasma TV? Where did it go? I have absolutely no idea. Do you have any idea? Plasma TV was once an amazing technology that sport lovers used to love. You get those bright, vibrant colors, right? No one makes plasma anymore. Whatever happened to it? It's completely gone. It is my belief that someday LCD technology may follow the same boat situation. That ship has sailed one day, potentially. Now, LCD TVs or liquid crystal display TVs are basically the same as LED TVs. LED TVs also have liquid crystal display. It's basically an LCD TV, but with LEDs behind the screen to illuminate the picture, as opposed to LCD TVs, which have a fluorescent tube uh, that basically, you know, go behind the TV, like one tube there, for example, another tube there, another tube there, another tube there. Uh, with, with these tubes or or these these LED lights that are behind the screen, like do 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 do, you're never gonna get a great picture like OLED, right? So this is another picture of this, what we're talking about right now, right? The LED, the, those individual little circles on the left, right? Are the LEDs that are making this picture lit up in front of your eyes, right? Uh, as opposed to the fluorescent tubes. Now going to OLED versus LED, or basically OLED versus LCD, it's the same technology, but with different light sources behind, right? OLED is obviously amazing. If you've, if you've been living under a rock, well, you wouldn't know, would you? Because you've been living under a rock. But if you haven't been living under a rock, like most people, you'd know that OLEDs are incredible with blacks because, well, they basically organic 
light emitting diode. <laughs> I had to remember that, but then I finally got there. So hang on, just give me a give me a round of applause. I'm, I'm not a huge tech expert, expert, but I'm trying my best here. Okay, this is a live show, guys. None of this is edited. Okay, so basically, an, an organic LED light emitting diode is organic. All right, which is not where I think technology is going for the long run. I also believe that OLEDs will probably face a similar uh, situation to plasmas and probably someday LCD screens or LED screens. I think plasmas will probably go that same way. Uh, OLEDs will probably go that same way, I should say. But at the moment, OLEDs are amazing because of the whole black, the pure black situation. That's because, you know, the individual organic light emitting diodes are able to turn on and off, right? So if you've got a dark screen, they all shut off. Or if you've just got a bit of light on the top left of the screen, the whole screen goes completely black except for that little bit, right? OLEDs are amazing, except for the whole fact that they're organic. The lifespan of an OLED isn't quite there as much as LCD TVs, all right? Or of course, mini L micro, L micro LCD TVs. <sighs> No, it's not micro LCD, but micro LED TVs. That's probably better. There we go. The technology, the lifespan for an OLED isn't quite there, right? It's organic. Plus, if you leave a picture that's paused for too long on an OLED, uh, there is the potential risk of burning. It doesn't quite happen as much as it used to back in the day. There are software. This, this software is uh, introduced on newer TVs to prevent uh, burning, but it can still happen if you have like a web page on a screen for you know hours and hours and hours constantly every day, right? Burning is a bit of a problem. So I think absolutely micro LED is where the technology for TVs is at in the future. Now, before we go to micro LED, speaking of LED TVs, of course, LCD TVs, but with LED lights behind them, right? This is basically the most, well, basic, Lee, the most basic of all this, right? The, the individual lights, terrible technology. Then we go to full array, which you've got a lot, a lot of L, a lot of LED lights now that are able to shut off, but still it's not OLED perfect, right? There's the moon, and you're still illuminating a, quite a big portion of the TV. Uh, it just doesn't look accurate. Now, if we go to mini LED, we're getting even better but the technology is nowhere, still nowhere near OLED or micro LED. This is micro LED down here. The whole screen, in theory, there are micro LEDs behind each individual pixel. I mean, that would be a perfect world, right? If this was completely released to the public, you could have pure blacks, just like, just like OLED. But the problem with OLED, is that OLED can't be too bright. There is a huge, there has been a huge problem over the years of trying to get OLED picture screens really bright. Now that every year they are making, the TV manufacturers, they are making them brighter and brighter. But when you compare the brightness and the blackness of an OLED compared to micro LED, there is no comparison. So, does micro LED have LCD? Well, let's, let's quickly ask this. Does micro LED, LED TV use LCD. Just like the standard LEDs found in current TVs, they're used to power the backlight of the television, a liquid crystal layer. Now the LCD TV itself moderates that light to create the image. Uh, micro LED isn't LCD at all. It's a whole new technology, TV technology, that also happens to use LEDs. So once again, it is my belief that OLED as well as LED, LCD, and plasmas will all someday cease to exist. Plasmas already do cease to exist. It's a sad situation, I know, if you are in love with those particular TV uh, technology types. Now, talking about my second thing, my second most loved thing from CES 2023 is this, right? This is it, pretty much right here. It's the Hulk. No, it's not. <laughs> Samsung's new micro LED TVs are 5 million times faster than your gaming monitor. Uh, it's another thing we could be talking about, and I will quickly talk about that right now. Let me just quickly scroll down, if I can find it. Let me just quick, quickly read the top. You know how OLED 
panels make LCD monitors look like slugs when it comes to response time? Well, you might want to sit down because Samsung's new micro LED TV is 500,000 times faster than its latest OLED panel. So not only are micro LEDs brighter, same darkness as OLEDs, but they are 500 times faster than OLEDs, right? Uh, that is very, very interesting. Now, if we scroll down and read this little thing right here, uh, Samsung has said that refresh rates are set at 240 hertz. That's 240 frames per second. And that the screen, screen to body ratio hits an impressive 99.9%. .9%. In other words, these TVs have virtually no bezels at all. Now, that is seriously impressive. Now these, this picture right here is of a, it could be a hundred, a hundred plus inch TV. That's how big this TV is, right? Now these TVs are incredible because they can actually be shipped to you in multiple segments. Forget about, you know, the days of, oh, well, I live in an apartment block. I live in a small building. I can't get, I can't get a massive box, a massive TV up my stairs, up my elevator in my tiny little cramped house. Forget about those days, they literally will be sending you these TVs in four or more segments. So a 50, let's, let's say this is a hundred inch TV, all right? One segment of 50 inches, another segment of 50 inches, of course, another 50 and another 50. Once you join all 50s together, uh, you get a hundred inch TV. Uh, absolutely mind boggling that you cannot see the seams in this TV at all. It is beautifully bright, beautifully black when it has to be, and the colors are vibrant as hell. Now, I will show you this, this quick little thing from Samsung's website, but my only beef with the technology so far is that micro LED TVs, uh, they seem to be stupidly bright. Stupidly bright. Like, when a bright scene comes on, I mean, you better start wearing sunglasses. So I think when this technology really does start to come to market, this year for consumers, I think they will have to add software to limit the brightness of these micro LEDs. It's literally stupidly bright. You will have to be sitting in a room that's lit up otherwise. Uh, otherwise you'll start to get a migraine headache or something like that, right? But anyway, going down, quickly play that little video again. This is the little video that Samsung has on the website. I mean, this is, potentially the end game technology for TVs. This is it. This is, I mean, this is it. This is potentially the, the end game. Our most advanced display technology ever with an ultra premium design and picture quality beyond belief from 89 inches to 110. Uh, wow. Going down a bit more. Intense contrast brings you, it brings your content to life. Micro uh, contrast. Individually controlled pixels generate breathtaking results. Get lost in infinite blacks and brilliant whites for incredibly intense contrast, right? So this technology is just going to get better and better as years go on. It'll get lighter and lighter and thinner and thinner. This technology really excites me. Color worth obsessing over. Micro color. Every microscopic detail of color comes to life in astonishing form. Spectacular, spe spectacular realism, I should say. Micro HDR. Experience ultra-realistic imagery as uh, textures and dimensions come alive through immersive uh, gradients. Gradients? Gradations? And, and picture, picture refinement. I can't even read today. Uh, perfor perfection. Perfection. I can't even read. Perfection. Perfecting. Perfecting your picture with AI micro... AI processor. I could go on and on and on, and I could probably make more mistakes as I go on, but there you go, right? A very interesting technology. Now, this tech is obviously <laughs> fucking expensive, uh, but if you can afford it, it is a very interesting te technology. I mean, just, just look at the houses that these uh, TVs are sat on, right? The, the <laughs> You're Bill Gates, right, to basically own this TV at the moment. So yeah, the TV is a very expensive technology. I don't actually have this have the spec sheet on, on how much these TVs are. But in CES 2023, they were showing a lot of different size TVs from 
the 40 inches to the 50 inches, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 100s, basically a TV size for, for whatever you want, right? Adobe Atmos, sound that tracks the action, Object Tracking Sound Pro, which is quite interesting technology. Uh, this technology also comes with these new TVs. I don't quite know how they do that, but they're obviously showing that the sound is coming from that object on the screen. Very interesting technology. Look, what do you guys think about these two things that I've showed you, plus the other things? Uh, let me know. There's obviously multi-view, which is quite interesting. And I'm pretty sure you can get multi-view with a 240 hertz refresh rate on all four panels, all, all of them, I'm pretty sure, showing different things, which is unheard of of any TV ever come, that's ever come before. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, let me know in the comments below. We're on both these channels, two and one. One is my travel vlog channel, at Tallboy Gareth, those social medias. I've been tall, my name's Gareth, and I'll see you beautiful people tomorrow. Thanks for having me back. Bye-bye. Oh, Samsung, Yakamichi, Nakamichi, I can't even say it. Sponsor me. Thank you.